Okay guys, sorry. Uh, apparently my iPad storage was full. I had to delete some videos and record a part two of this lesson because I was not finished and it cut out on me. So I was talking about um, particles and how do we convert between moles and particles and things like that. Well, first of all, um, one mole of anything is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, 23rd particles, okay? Particles is a general term used to describe atoms, ions, formula units, and molecules. There is a difference, okay? So a molecule is, are any non-metals combined together to make a compound. So we talked about covalent compounds before. So this is a molecule of, this is glucose, okay? So one mole of glucose is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of glucose. Just like one mole of water is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. Now, what is the difference between molecule, atom, ion, formula unit, okay? So a molecule is a covalent compound. A formula unit is an ionic compound where you have a metal bonded to a non-metal. An atom is any element, a singular atom of any element on the periodic table. And an ion is any element on the periodic table that is in ionic form. If you have one mole of any of those particles, it is equivalent to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles of that element, compound, uh, formula unit, molecule, ion, such, so on, okay? So that's a general term they use to describe all types of particles. Now, how do you understand the conversion between moles and particles? Okay, so if I were given so many moles of something and I'm trying to convert into particles, all right, I'm going to take whatever they give me in the problem. Remember, we always start with what they give you in the problem. And then I'm going to use this conversion factor, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles over one mole. Now, remember, when you're typing this in the calculator, okay, so if, say, for example, I had 3.5 moles of sucrose and I wanted to know how many molecules of sucrose I had. Well, I'm going to take my 3.5, because that's what they gave me in the problem, and I'm going to times that by the conversion factor of molecules over moles. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd over 1 mole. Remember, when you're typing this in the calculator, you're either going to use times 10 and use that caret key. If you use the caret key, make sure that you put this number, okay, Avogadro's number, in parentheses. If you don't, when you're dividing by that number, it will mess you up, okay? If you use the exponent button, the EE button, okay, in your calculator, let me get a calculator here. So in your calculator, it's actually right above the seven. You have to hit second comma, it's that comma, right above the seven, and it has a double E there. When you do that, it's going to bring it to a, up to a power of 10 for you. And you'll actually see, you would type in 6.02, second EE, and you'd actually see an E up here on the calculator then you just go and type in the exponent you don't have to put it in parentheses because it does it for you okay so just know the difference if you're going to use that caret key it's very important that you put the number in parentheses so if i take this i multiply by my ratio my conversion factor i should end up with 2.11 times 10 to the 24th power i would highly suggest practicing that because i'm giving you the answer here that way you know how to type it in the calculator now what if you were trying to go the other way? What if you were given particles and you were trying to go to moles? So what if I had 2.11 times 10 to the 24, excuse me, fourth molecules of sucrose, I would flip my conversion factor, okay? So the one before that, you're multiplying by the constant. In this case, we have one over the constant, the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Remember, you're using the caret key, put that number in parentheses. So in this case, I would multiply by one and then divide by 6.02 to the 23rd power, and I should get 3.5 moles, okay? All right, so here's an example of what I was telling you a minute ago. If I'm looking at copper or atomic nitrogen, those are atoms of those elements, okay? They, one mole of those equals Avogadro's number. If I have nitrogen gas and water, those are going to be molecules. So one mole of 
those molecules are going to equal Avogadro's number. And if I have an ion, such as calcium ion, it's going to equal one mole of that is going to equal Avogadro's number, and formula unit is also going to equal Avogadro's number. But look how we classify them, what type of particle it represents. Now, you will have a copy of this in Google Classroom. This is called the mole roadmap, okay? It basically helps you when you're trying to figure out what you're looking for. Everything has to go through the mole, okay? So all we're focusing on right now is going from particles to moles, moles to particles. So this right side of the roadmap is all we're talking about right now. When we do this, okay, so say, for example, we have moles and we're going to particles. So we're going down the road. This is the conversion factor that we would multiply by. Say we had particles and we were going up the road to figure out how many moles we had. You would multiply by this conversion factor, okay? So this is the only side we're going to be using of this roadmap. So let's do a couple problems. So I have magnesium, a light metal used in the manufacture of aircraft, automobile wheels, and tools. How many moles of magnesium do I have if I contain 1.25 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of magnesium? So I'm trying to go now from atoms to moles, right? So when I do that, I am going to use the conversion factor, okay, 1 over 6.02 to the 23rd power. So I'm going to take this number and I'm going to multiply it by this conversion factor. When I do that, I should get point, oops, excuse me, 0 0.208 moles of magnesium. Okay? All right? What if I have propane, okay, and I'm cooking and heating? How many atoms are in 2.12 moles of propane? Now, you have to be careful because they'll try to trick you sometimes. So this is not an atom, is it? It's a molecule. So I'm like, okay, wait a minute. So what I'm going to have to do is a three-step problem. I'm going to have to convert this into molecules by using my conversion factor, and then I'm going to have to multiply it by the number of atoms I have. Well, how do I know how many atoms I have? Well, you have three carbons and eight hydrogens. So if you add them together, you have a total of 11 atoms here. So watch how we do this. So in this problem, <clears throat> I am going to take what I'm given in the problem, 2.12 moles of propane. I'm going to multiply it by my conversion factor. Remember, I'm going from moles down to particles, so I'm going to use this conversion factor. I'm going to take 2.12 times Avogadro's constant divided by 1. That's going to tell me how many molecules of propane I have. Then I have to go one step further and multiply by the number of atoms to get my answer.